In this video, we'll consider what happens in detail when we do decimation and interpolation. So let's begin with the decimation circuit, which was our circuit of a filter followed by a downsampler removing samples from the intermediate signal Z of n. Now, if we were to implement this circuit directly, just as stated in this diagram, we would take x of n, we would convolve it with the impulse response of h of n, and we'd get z of n, and then we would remove samples from z of n in order to get y of n. Now, this would be a very inefficient way of implementing such a circuit, and the reason is the following, that we would be computing a lot of values of z of n, which are then immediately discarded in terms of building y of n. So we would do the convolution for a lot of values of z of m that we would never use. And this is a very inefficient use of computations in this circuit. So there is a way of addressing that. And we can get to that by looking explicitly at how the values of y of m are given from the values of x of m. So let's do that. So we write out explicitly what y of m is in terms of the input signal x of n. And we can write a few values of y of m for the specific case now of d equal to 3, just to exemplify. So here we have y of 0, y of 1, y of 2, and y of 3. And we've written out the convolution and the downsampling operation as the sum here. Now if we look at this sum in more detail, we see that it has a particular structure. So for instance, the first sample of h of 0 here uh, is always multiplied with x of 0, x of 3, x of 6, and x of 9. So values of x for time indices that are multiples of 3. And the same is true for h of 3, which is also multiplied by x for time indices that are multiples of 3. The same apply if we look at the shifted version of h. If we look at h1, it gets also multiplied by particular values of x of n for specific times. Uh, so specific times that are never multiplied by h of 0 or h of 2. So in this case, it's also almost multiples of 3, but uh, subtracted by 1, so slightly time shifted. So we can create this uh, system uh, in a structured form. So suppose that we have a signal x of n now. If we downsample it now by a factor of 3, as in the example, we would have x of 0, x of 3, and x of 6, as we covered before. If we time shift that same sequence and then downsample it, we would obtain these other samples of x of minus 1, x of 2, x of 5, and so on. And we can do the same thing. So here we have three decimated versions of x of n, but due to the time shifts, they contain different samples. So together, all of these contain the complete set of samples that we had in the original sequence x of n. Now we can filter each of these component signals with downsampled versions of the filter h of n. So in this first case, we will filter with h of 0, h of 1, h of 6, and so on. We collect that in the impulse response p of 0. And in the second case, those samples were multiplied by h of 1, h of 4, h of 7, and so on. So we could uh, include those in the filter p1, and similarly with the filter p2. So this would contain parts of the sums that we saw in the previous examples, and adding them all back up together would actually give us exactly the output we're looking for for the decimator system, but applying it in three different branches with filters p0 that are obtained from the original filter h of n. So this implementation is called a polyphase implementation of the decimator, and in this particular case for the decimator with a downsampling factor of 3. But we could extend this to an arbitrary downsampling factor by simply adding branches and carrying out the same reasoning. And as noted, the filters p of k are related to the original impulse response through the following formula. So essentially we read off the original impulse response at every third sample and then shift it depending on which filter we are looking at. Now, the reason for implementing a filter as a polyphase decimator is that it's more efficient to do than the direct implementation. So the idea uh, behind the polyphase filter is that these filters p, they are implemented uh, after we do the sum sampling. So in the original signal, we apply the filter h before we did the down sampling. So we apply the filter to the higher rate signal, and this is computationally inefficient. So in the polyphase implementation, we first do the down sampling, and then we apply the filters in the lower rate domain, 
we will not have to do as much computations per unit time as we would have to do in the high rate domain. And this leads overall to a more efficient implementation. Now, polyphase implementations are more relevant for uh, FIR filters H of n. So when our decimator is built using an FR, FIR filter. So why do you think that is? So is that because FIR filters are always stable? Would it be that IIR filters, so the opposite, are never implemented as direct convolution sums? Would it be that FIR filters can have linear phase, as we saw before? Or would it be that FIR filters are closer to ideal filters than the IIR filters are? Well, the correct answer to the question is option number two. So IIR filters are never implemented as direct convolution sums because they have an infinitely long impulse response. So instead they are implemented using recursive uh, systems or filters or structures that we have seen before. So the whole preceding argument was based on us uh, computing direct convolution sums and that would never happen in the IIR filter implementation. So for that reason these polyphase benefits are seen for the cases when we have H of n being FIR filters. We could also implement an upsampling and interpolating circuit using a polyphase filter implementation. So in an interpolating circuit we would have the upsampler u here and we would also have the interpolating filter H of n. And in the case of proper interpolation this filter would correspond to an ideal low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 1 over 2 u where u is the upsampling factor. And it would also include this gain of u in order to compensate for the power loss that we would have by inserting zeros. So if we implemented a circuit or an interpolating circuit as shown in this diagram, first upsampling then filtering, that would also be inefficient, but for a different reason than the inefficiency in the downsampler or the decimator. So the inefficiency here stems from the fact that in the signal set of M we would have a lot of zeros introduced by the upsampler and filtering those zeros or multiplying filter coefficients with those zeros would be wasted computations or wasted multiplications since we know that any multiplications with a zero will be identically equal to zero. So we could remove those from the computation and take that into account and that would be the basis for the polyphase implementation of the interpolating circuit. To arrive at the polyphase implementation of the interpolator, we do as we did for the decimator. So we write out the output signal as a convolution sum, but in this case involving the intermediate signal set of m. And for a particular example of u equal to 3, we can write out explicitly the samples of the output signal and express those in terms of the convolution sum. So the point here is that several of the components in set of m will be zero as introduced by the upsampler. So if you look at this, it turns out that in fact only terms in Z with a time index that is an even multiple of 3 in this case will be non-zero. So all the other terms would uh, be zero and can be removed from the convolution sum. And that would lead to a simplified expression of the following form. So if you look at the first sample of Y of zero, it involves a convolution with the input signal X of N, but it's convolved not with the impulse response H of N, but only with every third sample of that impulse response. And this corresponds exactly to this P0 uh, filter that we saw in the decimator polyphase implementation. If we look at Y of 1, we see a similar convolution sum, but in this case involving terms like H1, H4, H7 and so on, which are the terms uh, involved in the P1 filter in the decimator circuit or in the polyphase implementation of the decimator circuit. And similarly for Y of 2, we have terms which belong to the filter P2 of n. But when we get back to Y of 3, again we have the components corresponding to the P0 filter. So we only need three branches in the polyphase implementation for the interpolator. So looking at this, if we take the original signal X of, uh, X of n and we pass it through this P0 of n filter that's obtained from the original filter, just like in the decimator case, we get every third sample of the output sequence. If we time shift, uh, or if we take uh, X of n and pass it through the P1 filter, we get uh, the next samples Y1, Y4, Y7 and so on. And passing it through P4 gives us Y2, Y5, Y8 and so on. Now, in order to get the full sequence Y of n, we need to put, somehow put together these uh, samples 
into the sequence which runs y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, and so on to, to con uh, reconstruct the entire output sequence of our interpolator. So one way of doing this is to upsample each of these signals, which inserts a lot of zeros. And then we can simply time shift these two copies by an appropriate amount and add the signals together in order to recover the full sequence y of n. So introducing that as uh, time delays and additions recover the end result y of n in this way. And now you can see we've accomplished the same thing that we did with the decimator circuits. So we move the filtering operation, in this case from the higher rate domain after upsampling, to filtering operations before upsampling. And this is more computationally efficient. So this would be the complete polyphase implementation of an interpolating circuit. The filters, the polyphase filters, would be given exactly in the same way as they were for the decimator, but in this case relating, of course, to the interpolating filter that we choose to use. So it has to include this gain, for instance, in order to account for the fact that we lose power when we put in zeros into the signal. So summarizing the polyphase implementation. So polyphase implementation uh, will be more efficient than the direct implementation, also in the case of the interpolator. And the idea is, as we saw before, to put the filtering operation in the lower rate domain, which is what we do also in the interpolating circuit. So we have seen how the polyphase filters P of K relate to the original filters impulse response H of N in the time domain using the foreign learning formula, where K was either U or D, depending on if we did upsampling or downsampling. How do they relate, though, if we look at their C transform? So do you think that the original filter H of Z would be given as the sum of the polyphase filters in the C-transform domain? Would it be given as the sum of the polyphase filters but multiplied by C to the minus K? Or would it be the sum of the polyphase filters uh, multiplied by C to the minus K by taking the polyphase filters C-transforms and raising the power of Z to the power of K, where K is either this U or D? It can be shown that the last uh, answer is the correct one, so option number three. So in essence, the c to the minus k corresponds to the time shift that we do in terms of the original impulse response, and the c of k corresponds to the spacing of samples from h of n that we select for the polyphase filters. This can also be shown using a number of identities that are useful when working with multi-rate systems. So, these identities are usually referred to as the noble identities. And what they say is that we can relate a filtering operation which happens after a downsampling operation by a corresponding filtering operation before doing the downsampling. But if we do so, if we move the filter from after the downsampling to before the downsampling, we will need to raise the power of the C transform to a power of D or space the filter coefficients d apart in order to account for the fact that we are removing samples in the downsampler. We can do the same thing for the upsampler. So if we have a filter which is uh, occurring before an upsampler, we could put that filter after the downsampling if we space the taps of the filter appropriately. And this would be achieved by taking z to the power of u in the c-transform of the c-transform of that particular filter's impulse response. So to summarize, so the polyphase filter implementations can be more computationally efficient than direct implementations. And the whole idea behind the polyphase filter implementations is that we wish to filter, even if done so with partial filters, in the lower rate domain instead of applying filters in the higher rate domain, where we have to do more work per unit time in order to compute.